first weeks of pregnancy, the baby will continue to gain weight and accumulate more body fat. As the baby grows larger, the uterus expands. And the mother may experience increased discomfort, especially in the lower back, pelvis, and abdomen. In preparation for birth, the baby may experience position changes, such as shifting from side to side, or rotating within the womb. Most babies settle into a head-down position in the mother's pelvis, with their head closer to the birth canal. This relieves pressure on the diaphragm and makes breathing easier for the mother. It may also increase pressure on the bladder, leading to more frequent urination. This position, known as cephalic presentation, is considered ideal for vaginal delivery. However, some babies may remain in a breech or feet-first position. Throughout the final weeks of pregnancy, the baby's lungs continue to mature and produce a substance that helps keep the air sacs open and facilitates efficient oxygen exchange after birth. The baby may engage in practice breathing movements in the last weeks. These movements involve rhythmic contractions of the diaphragm and chest muscles, aiding in lung development and preparation for breathing air after birth. In anticipation of labor and impending parenthood, the mother can bring about a range of emotions. She may feel excited, anxious, nervous, or a combination of these emotions. Many mothers experience a surge of energy and a strong desire to prepare for the baby's arrival. This is commonly referred to as the nesting instinct. She may have an intense urge to clean, organize, and set up for the baby. Braxton Hicks contractions can occur as early as the second trimester, but become more noticeable in the last weeks of pregnancy. They are often described as practice contractions and help prepare the uterus for labor. As labor approaches, true labor contraction occurs. True labor contractions have a regular pattern and become increasingly frequent, longer, and more intense over time. They lead to gradual dilation of the cervix. The amniotic sac rupture, or water breaking, can occur at different times during labor. It may rupture on its own without any intervention. Or, if the amniotic sac hasn't ruptured naturally, the healthcare provider may intentionally rupture the amniotic sac using a sterile instrument called an amniotomy hook. During childbirth, the relaxin hormone in the body helps soften and loosen the ligaments and tissues in the pelvic area. This allows the vaginal walls and perineum, the space between the vagina and anus, to become more flexible and stretchy. Then the cervix begins to change in preparation for delivery. It starts to soften, thin out, and dilate. The cervix gradually opens, dilates, to allow the baby to pass through. It is typically measured in centimeters, with 10 centimeters 
indicating full dilation and readiness for pushing. Once the cervix is fully dilated, the mother enters the pushing stage. She actively pushes during contractions to help move the baby down the birth canal. As the baby's head moves through the birth canal, the vaginal walls stretch to accommodate its size. The vaginal tissues are designed to be elastic, allowing for significant stretching without causing permanent damage. Sometimes, a healthcare provider may perform an episiotomy to facilitate the baby's birth and prevent severe tearing. This is a surgical cut in the perineum to enlarge the vaginal opening. However, episiotomies are not routine and are typically only done when necessary. During the pushing stage, the baby's head emerges first. followed by the rest of the body. The baby's shoulders rotate to align with the pelvic outlet, allowing a smooth passage through the birth canal. After being born, the baby's respiratory system undergoes significant changes as the baby transitions from receiving oxygen through the placenta to breathing air independently. The umbilical cord is clamped and cut, separating the baby from the placenta. This is usually done once the cord has stopped pulsating to ensure the baby receives the maximum amount of blood and nutrients from the placenta. will continue to have contractions to deliver the placenta. This stage is typically shorter and less intense than the previous stages of labor. The healthcare provider evaluates the baby's condition, including vital signs, weight, and overall well-being.
dependent on the mother and foster a stronger bond between both parents and the baby.